Hi there, Doi Santos here with another edition of The Cusp. Well, the countdown to election day begins. We are now about 30 days away from the 2019 midterm elections. And today, I'll be looking at the Senate race and how that has been unfolding. We'll begin with Ocho Derecho, the tagline for the opposition slate, which launched its campaign about a month ago with the signing of a manifesto under Vice President Lenny Robredo's rubric of Ahon Lailayan. Now, this coalition has uh, committed itself to a number of things under this platform. And um, I'll just run through them one by one. They include indigenous people's rights protection, an end to ENDO, or the labor hire contracting practice, uh, protection against violence towards women, a national land use law to protect farm uh, and fishery sector uh, workers, on-site in-city laws to protect slum dwellers or informal settlers from being evicted and resettled outside the city, an expansion of the comprehensive agrarian reform uh, notice of coverage, as well as a People Empowerment Act. Um, and then finally, opposition to the lowering of the age of criminal liability. Now, once you read through that list, and, you know, there's not a lot of policy detail, I must admit. I tried looking for, you know, a website or a source somewhere where they explain all of these uh, elements one by one. But there isn't, I couldn't find any. Um, but one, even, even with this uh, short list, um, it becomes really clear that uh, what Ahon, the Ahon, uh, Salailayan, Ahon Lailayan Coalition, what they are seeking to do, is to give rights to minorities within the community. Um, they're targeting women, young people, agricultural uh, and permanent contractual labor, rural poor, urban poor, indigenous people. You know, it's very much aimed at the marginalized sectors of our society. And uh, this is in line with the vice president's advocacy of lifting those uh, who are on the fringes by granting them individual rights and uh, 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 aimed at protecting their freedoms. Um, oddly enough, though, uh, they, uh, nothing on, they, they, they say nothing on Muslim affairs with the former ARMM assemblywoman Samira Gutok not really making any um, noteworthy pronouncements or contributions in that area so far. Uh, another thing we can say is that the platform is reflective of the uh, Ocho Derecho lineup as well. You've got four lawyers, two of them, Shell Diokno and Erin Tanyada, following in the footsteps of their uh, ancestors as human rights advocates, right? Um, You've got uh, Romy Makalital, an election lawyer, and Pilo Hilibay, a law professor at UP, who also contributed to the Philippine case before the Hague Arbitral Court against China's claims in the South China Sea. Wow, what a mouthful. Um, yeah, so there are a bunch of lawyers there. Um, and then, of course, the vice president herself, being a lawyer, devoted her time to defending those on the out and out. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, the emphasis on uh, individual rights, human rights, uh, is, quite, is quite clear. They're, it's clear that they're using a rights-based approach to governance. Um, rights-based meaning um, their idea of fostering development, I suppose, um, both in human terms and economic terms, would be to give people individuals rights for which they could claim make claims against the state you know so um this is uh, so there's a certain this is this reveals a certain approach to governance and to development that ahon lailayan have basically taken and the fact that they've made all their candidates sign up to the same 
platform uh, is actually a good thing. I actually liked it when I saw that happening because it shows that the opposition is not just in um, going to... The, the, their campaign isn't just about opposing Duterte. Um, they're, they're actually defining what they really stand for, a positive agenda as opposed to just purely being negative, right? Um, but this does put uh, certain people like Gary Alejano of the Magdalo uh, party list um, a bit, you know, in, a, of, in an awkward position in, in a way because he hasn't really been uh, uh, known to be a staunch supporter of um, of uh, of individual rights, you know, um, having come from a a rebel group, so to speak. Unless you talk of the rights of military people, I don't know. But anyway, it's very clear that what the v, what the VP is trying to do, you know. So in an in the age of Dutertismo, in the age of Duterte, with backlash with a backlash towards the so called Dilawans. Um, uh, Robredo is trying to reframe and recast the image of the Liberal Party from a party of the out-of-touch elitists to one with a heart for the people. In other words, she's trying to rebrand the party as well in her own image in terms of Chinela's economics, a term that she coined back in 2016 during her campaign for the vice presidency. Um, yung bang hindi lang sila tutol ng tutol, di ba? Uh, may positive agenda din naman. At least that's what they're hoping to to um, to claim, right? And um, I guess one of the trade-offs with this, with adopting this strategy, is of course by siding with the people on the fringes, you also risk alienating the people in the mainstream, right? The people who make up the bulk of society. All right, so what's in it for them? Um, the broad middle classes who are constantly uh, under pressure, you know, from increased taxes so that they can support programs to help the poor. The business sector, which again, you know, uh, is uh, contributes the bulk uh, to uh, income taxes, for example. The entrepreneurial classes who have to employ people uh, and deal with, you know, rising costs of uh, and, you know, the difficulties of doing business in, in the Philippines. So these are the people that, you know, you might sort of neglect uh, by having uh, this sort of platform um, by, by specifically targeting the minorities and hoping to cobble together a coalition that would support a winning uh, set of candidates, the, the risk is that you alienate um, the broad sections of society. Uh, but I guess they've made this calculation, right? They've somehow made this calculation, and it's part of the rebranding of li the, the liberals to, to be, you know, for the common people and, and uh, fight the good fight on their behalf, right? Um, so what can we say? So far, uh, it's it's had a very muted response from the public, um, the Ocho Derecho and their platform. Only one out of the eight candidates is solidly in the Magic 12. That's former Secretary Mar Rojas. And um, the other incumbent Senator, Bam Aquino, who sailed through back in 2013 on the, back, on the wave of... Uh, you know, support for his um, cousin, Noy Noy Aquino, who was very, who was the president at the time, very popular. He is actually at risk of dropping out of the Magic 12 um, because of, you know, now there's a, there's the, the swing of the pendulum. It swung to the opposite end. And now he's facing, you know, resistance. Uh, whereas before he was sort of riding on the coattails or riding on the wave. Now he's swimming against the tide, if you like. So that's that's the that's the pro that's the challenge that they face. I guess you know the the campaign, the platform really hasn't um, gotten any traction uh, as far as the po uh, or there's no evidence that there has been traction if you just simply look at the polls, right? Um, now their rivals over at uh, the ruling party PDP Laban, 
uh, is facing slightly better chances than they are. So they've got three out of the five candidates making it to, uh, to the top 12. Three out of the five, I'm talking about Mabago Koto, okay? Ma, Mabago Koto, which is an acronym for the names, the first syllables of the names of the candidates. Very creative, by the way. <laughs> um, these are former special assistant to the president, Bongo. Uh, former police chief, Bato de la Rosa. Uh, and Senator Coco Pimentel. So that's Bago Co. Uh, former MMDA chair Francis Tolentino is also a possible contender for the Magic 12. So it might be Bago Coto <laughs> with Tolentino. Only Maguindanao representative Dong Magundadatu uh, at this point looks nowhere near, nowhere near striking distance of the Magic 12. So if ever, they might actually get you know, four out of the five, which is a good batting average, you might say. Um, but that would only be like, even if they had four, that would only be like a third of the 12 that are going to be elected, right, in uh, uh, at the polls. So, but any case, this would mean that PDP Laban would pick up two to three extra seats, while the Liberal Party would simply keep their existing seat, just wrote, you know, Bam loses his seat, Mar... Uh, uh, replaces him or add one if so Liberal Party might pick up a seat if Bam ma manages to uh, retain his seat in the Senate uh, and that will somehow you know increase both parties uh, share which isn't which uh, of course at the moment um, is is kind of uh, low for PDP Lab and they only have two seats so they would pick up two to three extra seats. And I think um, for the Liberals, they've got about, I think, uh, five seats, if I'm not mistaken. So they, they'd pick up another two. So that would bring them up to seven, I guess. But anyway, PDP Laban hasn't uh, got a, unif you know, like a formal platform that they've adopted. Um, for this election, that is. Uh, they do have party principles, but they haven't really put out a manifesto for this election in terms of what are we going to do if we get elected within the next six years. Um, so what I've done is I've cobbled together all the election commitments from, their in, from the individual candidates uh, based on their speeches and pronouncements in the early stages of the campaign. Uh, so... What what does their what do their pledges include? Um, without naming who has made the pledge, this, this is this is it. This is their this is their uh, this is their platform. So first of all, federalism, federalismo, greater autonomy for the local government units, uh, Magna Carta for barangay officials. Uh, you could say those two are part of the same under the same heading of local governance. Death Penalties for big-time drug lords, mandatory rehab for heavy drug users, provincial rehab centers. Again, that's sort of like under the same heading of war against drugs. Uh, inclusion of drug awareness in basic education curriculum. That's part of the same set. Then some structural changes in government. They are promising to set up a department for water and, and, an, and a separate department for overseas Filipino workers. Right, as well as strengthening the MMDA and expanding Malasakit centers, the centers that sort of combine all the services of government, a one-stop shop, if you will. And uh, something they have in common with uh, the Liberal Party, the well, the Ahon Coalition Party is uh, ending Endo, right? So one thing in common, at least. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when you look at all these promises, a common theme also emerges. <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh, what PDP Laban is focused on is improving governance, expanding programs of government or making them more accessible to people uh, to combat problems faced by society and uh, to uh, basically increase the reach of the state. So that's their position. Very much an incumbent party's platform, you might say. So, um, 
put the parties positions the two coalition uh, well PDP Labans and Ahon uh, Lailayan coalitions uh, positions side by side and there's there seems to be a clear contrast between them right both in terms of their overarching philosophies and approach to governance and development on the one hand ocho derecho you have uh, the rights based approach like uh, so the purpose of governing is to give people in uh, uh, rights and protections under the law so that um, uh, they're they're protected from discrimination from oppression etc on the other hand mabago koto uh, is all about uh, strengthening, um, you know, uh, or ex or expanding services, making them more accessible, providing benefits to the broad population, um, and making government work better. In other words, so between giving rights and giving services to the people, that's sort of the contrast. Yun yung parang contrast na lumalabas dito, ano? So, ngayon, um, maanong masasabi natin? So, bale, ang masasabi natin dito, may, there are clear battle lines. Hindi totoo yung sinasabi ng, il, ng ilan na walang, puro personality lang ang, ang contest and walang ideas, walang, walang, prinsipyo no walang walang uh, walang polisiya walang you know walang pinagkaiba yung dalawang panig ano so uh, th th but that's clear when you compare these two there's a clear philosophy on either side but where it becomes personality driven i would say <clears throat> is when you look at the replacements. Ano tong replacements na tinatawag natin, ano? What do I mean by that? In this election, bale, may anim na senador. There are six that are either reaching incumbents, no? That are either reaching their term limits or opting out, opting not to challenge uh, or to seek re-election anymore. Sino-sino tong mga to? You have Senator Lauren De Garda, Chis Escudero, Greg Onasan, Sunny Trillanes, Alan Peter Cayetano. Um, they're all stepping down in June. Uh, and meanwhile, you have JV Ejercito, who's seeking re-election, and Coco Pimentel, who are actually running the risk of dropping out of the Magic 12. So you have you have these... these uh, these senators, one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven, that uh, that will be replaced. And who are their replacements? Um, possible replacements. Ito sila, si Lito Lapid, Jingoy Estrada, Bong Revilla, Pia Cayetano, Bongo, Bato de la Rosa, and Aimee Marcos. All of these candidates that I just mentioned nagpe-place sila sa Magic 12. So, potentially, sila yung papalit dun sa mga nagre-retiro o yung mga parang nalalaglag na sa Magic 12 or may posibilidad na ma ma mawala sa, na sa Magic 12, no? Based on recent polling. The most recent polling. Ngayon, kung mangyari to, um, the Senate will be, in my view, a much more, a much diminished body, policy-making body. I know. I mean, nobody will have the policy grant that Lauren Legarda has come to have. No, her mastery over the budget, finance matters, her advocacies on the environment, uh, and you know, in international affairs as well. Nobody seems there will be no. It will be a loss to the Senate. No, <clears throat> the fact that we won't have Lauren there. No one will have the mastery of or of local government uh, like Coco does. No one there to push federalism without him. Uh, and uh, no one with the depth of J.V. Ejercito's knowledge of universal health care who will also advocate for a sovereign wealth fund that will help provide funding for the universal health care law that was just passed. 
So, in my view, um, delikado, delikado yung... <laughs> Kung, kung yung, if, if polling continues, if the trend continues, medyo delikado. Instead, ano, you'll have three actors who are all policy lightweights, in my view. No? Uh, Lapid, Estrada, Revilla. Three policy lightweights joining Manny Pacquiao, basically. Uh, and then if you add Tito Soto you, you, to that list, although T Tito Soto is a veteran politician and veteran lawmaker, uh, we can't deny that. But all of their careers started from their showbiz or sporting, from being famous celebrities. You know? <clears throat> so what that means is over a fifth will of our Senate, of our senators will come from from this field, you know, showbiz or sports. Now, that's probably a first, I think. I don't know a time na umabot ng ganong karami. Pagkatapos, uh, when you add to that the spouses or children of famous celebrities that are there or about to go there, katulad nila Ralph Recto, who's married to Vilma Santos, no? Kiko Pamilina, who's married to uh, Sharon Cuneta, Marojas, uh, Grace Poe, whose political careers were boosted by their celebrity partners or parents. And ibig sabihin nun that over a third, no? nine senators in all, would owe their positions basically to the magic pixie dust that comes from being associated with or having celebrity status. Now, there is clearly something wrong with our system, you know. If uh, it keeps, well, if it keeps producing this kind of result, and uh, you know, the the proportions at which it's producing this result increases over time, you know. Lumalaki, lumalaki yung porcento ng mga celebrity sa senado, you know? So. This is a danger to our democracy, sa tingin ko. Pag naging popularity, you know, it, when, it, when it turns into a popularity, not policy-driven contest, our republic is at, is at risk. When you consider the importance of the Senate no, as a body, it's the highest policy-making body in the land, unang-una. It helps to screen Supreme Court justices who will determine, you know, the uh, the, the the rule of law um, and the major rulings, no, uh, on our constitution. They ratify international treaties, you know, treaties on defense, on trade, on the movement, on you know, um, intellectual property, uh, human trafficking. And they potentially sit as judges, senator judges, when the, an impeachment court is convened, right? If, we, if, if the House impeaches an impeachable official, sila yung mga huwes, ano? And they also act as a check against the lower house, which is right now dominated by local political dynasties who are backed by wealthy individuals, right? So... The Senate performs an important role in our democracy. Kung puro mga policy lightweights o kaya mga nandun lang sila dahil sikat yung mga sikat sila o sikat yung mga yung mga asawa nila o mga magulang nila. Eh paano na yung ating Senado? How is it going to perform its role well? No. Um when you consider that five the la uh, out of uh, three out of the last five presidents in Scori came from the Senate. Ano? Estrada, Makapagal, uh, Aquino, uh, Noy Noy, Aquino, three out of the last five came from the Senate. Four of the last vice presidents came from the Senate as well. Um, Estrada, Under Ramos, uh, Arroyo, No Lead Boy, De Castro and Marojas, they all came from the Senate, um, the situation looks diabolical. 
Uh, how much longer can we live with such a system no? that promotes people on the basis of celebrity, not on the basis of merit? Kung baga, napaka-symbolic na dating ng demokrasya natin kung ganito. Ano? When you consider the fact that Jingoy is out on bail for the crime of plunder, no less, in relation to the DAP Napoles scandal. No? And who, you know, self-confess, sabi niya, we received this money in exchange for the vote that we gave during the impeachment trial of uh, Supreme Court Justice, uh, Chief Justice Corona. No? When you consider that Bong Revilla was acquitted of the same crime on a or the same charge on a technic on a mere technicality no sufficient evidence however the the sandigan bayan i think was it that ordered ordered him to return the money in question which he by the way has refused to 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 recognize or to honor while his aid his close aid was convicted of the crime so walang ebidensya sa kan- sufficient evidence to pin him down pero yung aid niya na sigurado naman hindi yun he's probably not acting on his own di ba without the permission of his boss pero wala lang pruweba eh, no? walang paper trail siguro nakakapagpatunay na talagang ininstruction ni Bong Revilla na gawin yun kupitin yung pera makipagdeal kay Napoles eh na-convict along with Napoles di ba and when you consider Aimee, for instance, is part of the Marcos dynasty that continues to deny that they plundered the Philippines, Philippine coffers, even after several courts, including our own Supreme Court, have ruled that they have, and despite the fact that billions have already been retrieved from their illegal stash of wealth, right? And you start to question and wonder about the judgment of the people that are endorsing them. No? I'm talking about Hukbong ng pagbabago, Sarah Duterte, who's endorsing their candidacies, right? And from this perspective, I agree with those that say that this contest is no longer about ideas, right? But simply about applying the principle of politics as addition, right? So, may regional party ka, hukbong ng pagbabago, hukbong. Tapos, how do you win a national contest, right? Well, let's just add on, add on, add on the people that are popular. Politics as addition. She may claim that these candidates that she's supporting will support Digong's agenda in the Senate. But if you go by her recent intervention at the House, you can bet that hindi sigurado yan ano, na susuportahan si Presidente. Tinan nyo yung nangyari dun sa speakership ni GMA na tinulak ni Sarah. No? Pinatalsik niya yung mga kaalyado ni Duterte, si Alvarez, tsaka si Coco. Pinalitan sila ni GMA dito Soto. Uh, well, GMA in particular in-endorse ni, ni Sarah. No? Not only was the push for federalism cut short no, because of GMA and the distrust that senators had for her, because she also attempted to to make some changes that many said was to keep her in power. Um, not only was the push for federalism dead in the water, so to speak, at the Senate because of her, pati yung budget ni Presidente itong 2019 ay naantala rin eh, no? yung kanyang infrastructure program. Na, na delay yung pagbasa ng budget dahil kung ano-ano ang ginawa ng mga lieutenant ng GMA uh, kinestion ng mga senador tuloy and the GMA really has had a history of not passing a budget year, year in and year out kaya parang nagpatuloy lang yung tradition niya of not passing budgets um, buti na lang na na i- na i na gawa ng paraan din ano nag-compromise yung Senate and yung House and we're still awaiting if the president Duterte what his actions are going to be towards this budget so so much delay has happened we're already into the second quarter of the year so that international monetary institutions have downgraded the Philippine growth uh rate uh, the expected growth rate for this year already 
So, sasabihin mong, ito, ito na naman tayo, si Sarah. Just willy-nilly, ito. nag endorse siya ng mga kandidato who are not really part of the president's, uh, you know, lineup. Hukbong ng pagbabago? It's more like walang pinagbago. You know? To the DDS supporters out there who oppose Coco Pimentel's candidacy, I, I, I can only scratch my head. Alam nyo ba, Duterte made a pledge na isusulong niya ang federalismo. That was a core campaign promise having come from Davao ano, against Imperial Manila. Ayun, pag hindi pum- naka- na-re-elect si Coco sa Senado, ano, then the chief architect of federalism the chief proponent in the Senate for federalism. Uh, if he's taken out, then wala na yun. Wala na yung kampanyang yun. Build, build, build. Baka still, still, still na ang mangyari niyan. O kaya lie, lie, lie. Deny, deny, deny. Yan ba ang pagbabago na hinahanap natin? Teka muna, mag-esip-esip muna siguro tayo, di ba? Um, as Duterte has said, what he needs are not yes men. Yung mga yes men, yes men. But people like J.V. Ejercito or Sunny, Alver- Sa- Sunny Angara who can independently state what is wrong with certain approaches proposed by the palace and improve things, you know, from healthcare to taxation, make improvements, advise, um, and uh, provide alternatives that are better. If Sarah just wants people who will act like stooges for her father or and presumably for her if she decides to run in 22, 2022 to succeed him, then I suppose that's a matter for her. But the fact is, policymaking is not enhanced by having group think. You only have to revisit the failures of the Ang Matuid and the group think that that represented in the previous administration to come to that conclusion. We need independent thinkers, like-minded, but independent people who are going to constructively engage with the administration. Uh, not just, you know, say yes all the time. Um, so that's the problem, you know. The more things change, the more they stay the same, it seems. So now, um, before I conclude... Uh, this, uh, this, this topic, um, I'd like to introduce the topic for the next episode. Basically, I, given the fact that we've highlighted here that, you know, our Senate, the way we elect our senators, uh, the trend is not, it's, it's not trending well, right? We, we are basically living in a damaged democracy because of the popularity contest that's happening. And it's not just this election. You can go back so many elections. The same thing happens over and over again. Insanity device doing the same thing over and over again, hoping for a different result no? by definition. So what I plan to do in the next, well, part two of this um discussion on the Senate race. We'll be going over some some proposals that I think are worth uh, worth considering if we want to make things better. If we want to improve the system, make it make it more representative uh, and elect people based on merit, not simply based on name recall. So that's what we're going to be discussing. Uh, at our next episode, I hope you do join me. Uh, for now, I just want to invite those who are listening. Uh, if you haven't yet before, please do check out our previous episodes by visiting the website cusp-ph.blogspot.com. Subscribe to our Twitter feed at cusp underscore ph and our Facebook page at cusp-ph so that you can get notified of any new episodes. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel where I'll be uploading this episode shortly. Send me comments and questions through any of these platforms and I hope to respond to them in subsequent episodes. So 
hanggang dun na lang po. Until next time, uh, I hope to see you again. You've been on the cusp. I'm Doy Santos, signing off.